<laughs> Wait, do you guys want uh, some water? Listen. We're already in the show. That's fine. Too that's late. Fine. We're rolling. Uh, customer service. What a host. What customer a host. Customer service. Think of your podcast as a stage and you have an event space. Think about who you want to serve. Use it as a stage to create leverage around the people that you want to meet that will add validation to what you already believe, the people that you're trying to serve that you want to add value to from that stage, and that content as how you can share that with people without just being a one-to-one scenario. One of the first things that I always ask with uh, CEOs that I work with, what do you want the business to do for you? Right, Because we're going to pour our heart and soul into the business. Um, what do you want the podcast to do for you? Yeah. I had something that really bothered me happen the other day, or like, I won't say bothered me, it stuck with me. And somebody was talking to me about their show, and they, I listened to it before I got on the call with them. It was a, it's a really good show. And, and they're just like, it's just not growing. What do, I, what do I do? I'm like, well, you need to get out there and do this. And finally, the person just stopped me goes, Alex, I'm not a marketing person. I, I just like to interview interesting people and talk to them. He goes, is, is there a way someone else can do that? We've got some hey, fresh, new I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. You and you're listening before. to the Content One, is Profit two, podcast. Three, Anyways, welcome back to Contents Profit Special Edition Podcasting Town Hall with some special guests here today. Studio Clap, everybody. Yeah, there you go, Studio Clap. Yeah. Wait, do you guys uh, want some water? What's up? Do you guys want some water? I mean, I have my water. I'm like pro level. We're already in the show. That's fine. Fine. Too late. We're rolling. Uh, customer service. What a host. What customer a host. Customer service. So, uh, a little backstory. Obviously, we'll, we'll share a little bit of how we met, but. All three of these studs have been in the show before. Alpha males. Uh, alpha males. Pablo is actually the first official guest of Content is Profit ever. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, you know, we met a long time ago and also incredible consultant, advisor, friend, mentor, all of the things. Father figure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's my age, isn't it? <laughs> and, uh, I'm just saying, but you're the only one with white hair in here. So, yeah. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Alex is starting to lose his hair, though. That's, <laughs> that started at like 25, so it's in 10 years in the making it's thus older. far. It's so, older. Wow. You know it is. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Alex over there, we went to our first podcasting uh, conference, and we saw him speak, and we're like, we need to meet that stud. And uh, you know, we met him at the bar, and he's like, I'm actually from your city. And then we connected, and turns out that he's, uh, you know, a god in the podcasting world. Just saying, mm. just just that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I want to take that. All right. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna leave more than a man. For sure, more than, more than a man. <laughs> so, if you want to find out more, the, all the links are going to be right below. Just click on them, and you're going to find out more about them. And then obviously, Fonzie here, official co-host of Content is Profit and uh, mastermind behind everything. So, we sure. thought about me. I did find the splitters, you know, for the mics. So. <laughs> you did find the splitters. <laughs> I'm only here because of Fonzie, by the way. <laughs> so, but anyway, so we somebody had a, picked a bro. We picked. Yeah, thank you, guys. Oh, we'll have that at the end. We'll definitely <laughs> bring pick a bro back to the end of this episode. Yes, please. So it turns out after the big decision of you know coming and and recording here in uh, Studio Podcast Suites and that that we are now proudly own. Let's go. So Woo, let's go. For let's, go. let's go. Let's uh, go. Huge acquisition. Like, why don't we do like a podcasting you know town hall type of episode and uh, eight months uh, eight weeks later eight we're months here. later wow <laughs> state of the union. <laughs> But anyway, so Pablo, you know, yeah, what do I we want to talk about I, today? I feel like Pablo, <laughs> Pablo is the MC, you know. Am you, I? Yeah, yeah. You Real know. quick, I got to say this in, in Pablo's defense. We, right before him record, we're like, oh, Pablo, you kind of know where we want to go, right? And you're like, huh? And then you started <laughs> and now you're like, go ahead, Pablo, what are we doing? And we're like. Uh-huh. Uh, hey everybody <laughs> well yeah. before the episode I was like I think we should take this in here and here I was like that's a great idea and he's usually an MC you know he's great at guiding Here's conversations what we'll, do. we'll do a two minute introduction of each one of you and then after that we'll go in straight into content right a little bit of, of like why are we here why are we how are we involved in the industry and then we'll go tackle the topic so Alex why don't you start Two minutes is going to be tough for me, just so you know. Then one minute. I was thinking eight minutes. <laughs> uh, 18. Yeah, so Alex Sanfilippo, I am the founder of podpros.com, which is a company that, thank you, thank you very much, appreciate it, thank you. Uh, a company that focuses on offering software solutions for independent podcast hosts and their guests. Uh, our most popular service is Podmatch, which is literally like a dating app, but connects podcast podcast guests and hosts together for interviews. And for me, I just focus on being an educator in the space. So for me, it's just helping educate the next generation of podcasters, which I think are really doing a great job serving the world. Like this is my favorite form of media and I love seeing that just get accelerated and grow. Sweet. 
Yeah, so they know, they know, they know. <laughs> Alex was the first guy to be famous off of podcasting in this table, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. For the record, for the record. For the record. Uh, my name is Pablo Gonzalez, founder of Be The Stage. I have been obsessed with relationships my whole life and scaling relationships through community and how all that works. Content creation is the new golf. It is the new way to create relationships that last and it's way more useful. So it brought me to the podcast medium. And if you're going to focus on building a company through relationship building, then you need to be evangelizing a problem. You need to be evangelizing this way of helping a certain type of people and have them feel like you understand them. They, f they need to feel understood. Podcasting is a great medium. So focusing on a problem, focusing on evangelizing it, using content to do it to me is the modern go-to-market strategy. And I'm a huge fan of every one of these guys in here. <laughs> Just a really, really big fan. I think, I think the idea of having acquired these podcast suites, I want to talk about it because I think the future of commercial real estate runs right through the, the spaces that are used to solve problems. And one of the big problems that we're going to have is how do we create content for businesses in a, in a consistent basis? So this idea of the shared economy of podcast suites for content creation, I think it's brilliant. I'm super proud of you guys for doing it. I'm pumped to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Jerry so Mack. <laughs> Pressure's on. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm, I'm the midget at the table. So um, Jerry Mack, here. I'm the founder of Proven Chaos. Uh, over the course of my career, I've been super lucky to run five businesses, five different industries, B2B, B2C, sold products and services. And um, I believe in podcasting because I think it's the greatest opportunity in a low-cost way to connect with your clients, your consumers, to evangelize your problem, to... Uh, uh, borrow Pablo's words there. And I, I think if you're in business today, you should have a podcast. It's, it gives you an opportunity to have thought leadership, to bounce ideas, to build relationships. And for me, um, I've been um, running my own show, Best Places to Lead, for the last 16, 18 months. And Woo! it's a good show, man. It's and a good so, show. And so, you know, the point of that is. Um, I, it's a great opportunity for me to speak with other award-winning leaders who have done amazing things and to share the ideas of how do we get forward better because we're always better together. And so my mission is to positively impact 5 million people over the next four years through better business because I've never had anyone show up to work and say, I really want to suck today. <laughs> and yet there are plenty of people that are ineffective. And so I'm trying to scale the knowledge and the lessons learned that people have had in running and growing their own businesses. So that's what I'm doing. Sweet. That's pretty good, guys. Pretty good. So um, some pre-podcast pre conversation, right, you guys? Some of us are, like, super huge believers in the industry, right, going up. Some others, I heard some comments, right, not going to point fingers, but they're like, hmm, maybe, I don't know, like the podcast as an industry, it might, it might be going down. I don't know. It might be overpopulated. I don't know. Obviously, we all know the power of creating content and building their relationships through that content. Podcasting is a platform that makes that very, very easy. But I'm interested of like, what's your view in the industry on itself? Can I just start with, this is something that I've learned. Um, when you have experience in something, it's easy to you. And the reality of it is, if you've never done this before, it's super intimidating. And so when I advise businesses, What's simple to me, people have never seen before. And so I have to give you guys a lot of credit because you've you know, blazed the path in front of other people to give them opportunities to be successful, but don't diminish the fact that this is hard. What you guys do is hard and doing it well is even harder. And so I just, I, I caution you to say like, oh, it's super simple. Yes, once you learn it, Mm. But at the at the outset, I think it's intimidating. It's the imposter syndrome. What will I have to say that someone would might resonate with? And I just I, I want us to be careful because I do think it's the greatest platform in today's environment to to grow your business to connect with your audience, and you can do it cost effectively. You don't have to buy media. You can if you want to accelerate your show. But I just I caution that because it's yeah. something that I run into a lot. Like oh, this is running a business is really simple. No, it isn't. <laughs> Not for people who haven't done it well before. Yeah. Right. Thank you. I'm, I'm interested in Alex. Alex, you were saying some stuff earlier. I think you, you as a guy that has a SaaS platform that serves thousands of podcasters, I think you have a really wide breadth of understanding of what's going on in the industry. You want to kind of like share what you're hearing right now in the ecosystem? 
Yeah, sure. Um, first off, like to me, like looking at industry health as a whole, when, when I think about that, the very first thing I look at is just what is the one metric that matters? And to me, that's listenership. And if listenership is growing, I think it can be a very healthy industry. Now, are healthy things happening below that metric? I, I say no. Um, and we'll, we'll, I'll talk about that in a second here. But just in general, like, is it a good time for podcasting? Yes, because more people than ever are listening. And it's getting referenced in a lot of movies now. Like, it's not uncommon. Like, at sure. first, the first time I heard podcasting mentioned in a movie or like it was a TV show, maybe it was like, what? Podcasting on TV? <laughs> right? Yeah. And now people are like, oh, yeah, I found about this podcast through like a TV show. They talked about it. I'm like, okay, this yeah. is just now common placement, right? Yeah. So it's, be, it's become part of the cultural zeitgeist. Yeah, there you sure. go. Yeah, it's yeah. a great way to say it. And yeah. I, I mean, seeing that happen, that's a great thing. So I think the industry is healthy from that standpoint. Sure. But I do see that attracting the wrong type of people to podcasting. Mm. And because of that, I'm very concerned about its future health from a content perspective. So not like, will it work? It'll work. But who's getting into it is the problem. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But the first thing I, I think of is just like when you see the opportunity, we have more people than ever trying to be guests. So like hosts, yeah, they're still starting. But like, if you go back, I, I looked at the numbers this morning because I want to be ready for this. Um, there are under 400,000 active shows still. And last time there was more than that was, I think it was July, 2020. Hmm. Uh, and at this point we're recording this, that's years ago. So yeah. if there's actually, that was the last time there was anything more than there is now. It's just consistently stayed around 400,000. Yeah. And right now it's below that as we're recording this. And so it's like, man, people are not sticking with it, but people are joining as a guest because they're like, same opportunity, right? I get a great content, but I don't have to do what these two guys do, right? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you, you, these two guys, are, the biz bros are going to be like crushing it. Con you know, like they're going to do all the work, right? And so people are seeing that. And the problem I'm seeing is the small indie podcaster who's doing all the work, putting the effort in, yeah. is saying, how do I grow and monetize this? Because there's more listeners than ever, but I'm not getting them. And two, how do I make money with this? And unfortunately, I was telling Pablo this offline before we started, but a lot of the, 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 I'll just call them like the legacy gurus in podcasting also have no idea how to make money with a podcast. Also don't know how to grow one. They just were there at the right time. So it just worked naturally. Yeah. If you're the first person podcasting that everyone starts talking about it, you're going to be famous, right? It's just how it goes. Yeah. Um, so they tell people, here's two ways to grow your show and monetize your show. Sorry. Number one, have on really big guests and they will share it and it'll grow your show which we've all know that does not actually, maybe, maybe gives you a small spike at first, but that doesn't really work like at all. The number two thing they say is if they're not really big and don't have a massive following or not going to grow your show, charge them to be on it so you can monetize your show that way. And my big problem with that is you immediately turn a meaningful experience, a relationship, a connection into a transaction. And as soon as it turns into that, the whole dynamic of the interview is different. Yeah. The whole process is different. And, yeah. and really like you're, you're missing the big opportunity. Like if you really want to monetize, don't charge your guest, turn them into a client later. Right. That's like the real secret behind it. But uh, yeah, so that being the wrong education that I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm fighting that education that the industry is just starting to really buy into. And I am losing yeah. that battle really bad right now. I mean, we, we see it right every day with the people that are coming into the physical studio here is like the, they see it as a vehicle to maybe grow their business faster than ever, right? It's a new opportunity. Maybe their reference uh, on content might be coming from somebody that has been in the industry for 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. Publishing consistently yeah. or some other type of video content. Yeah. And it's like, oh. Which happened to all of us, right? I, like, I, wa I wanted my first show to be the Lewis Howe show immediately, right? Like, <laughs> but it wasn't. But yeah, it I wanted way that better. too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was way better, right? Yeah. And uh, I think what you're doing, Alex, and everybody here too, is like the, the education around the industry, right? It's like, yeah. is this a long-term play? Are we, are we painting the picture for the business owner that wants to start a platform like this, right? I remember having a conversation with Greg, the first client that we worked right. together, yeah. uh, and uh, it was like, his pain was like, I just need a consistent way to do this long-term and build rela relationships long-term. It's like, that is the perfect vehicle to the point that, now you guys have an in-house studio, right? And mm -hmm. you guys do all the production in-house, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like doing a, an internal audit, like why are you starting a podcast, right? Why do you wanna start a, a platform? I'm being very honest, right? For us, we've been very honest from the very beginning, it was a Hail Mary, uh, Hail Mary movement when, when we, did, what do you call it in English? It's a pass. Hail Mary pass. <laughs> you should stick to, <laughs> stick to soccer references. I'm just gonna be like, stick to soccer references. 94th minute messy freaking there goal. Go. There it is. There you go. That's <laughs> better. It. Put it in there, okay, that's way better. And, but we had no idea how to do it. And we just ran into the somebody that came into the show, be like, what do you guys do? And we're like, oh, we do X. I'm like, I need you guys. I'm like, perfect, right? And it was a very, we were very lucky because he was after 20 episodes and that just fueled the, the experience, right? 
Yeah, I, I think you touch a very important point in here, which is, you know, not many people stick into the podcast. Audience growing, but then they're not getting those audiences. And I'm guessing, you know, somebody that has a small size podcast might be asking themselves, so how do I start growing my listenership? Let's say they might not have a big budget to do it, right? And I'm, I want to pre-frame this with a conversation that we had with our last guest, Gary Henderson. And I'm sure if you guys are familiar with him. Have you heard of him by any chance? No? Cool, bald guy. Um, he's developing, like, <laughs> awesome community. Actually, it would be... Alex a, in 10 years? Alex in 10 years. <laughs> yeah. He would actually be a, a, a great connection uh, for you guys, especially. Cool. He's, like, developing this community in Web3, which is super cool. But he was talking. I literally spend 20% of my time creating content and, like, 80% just promoting that content. Yep. Right? Like, he yep. goes into all the other platforms and talks about the content that he just created. Right, and I think a lot of creators don't have that mindset. Right, a lot of people that come into the space, they just go, "Oh, I'm gonna publish it. I'm gonna hit publish, and everybody's everybody's gonna be able to listen to it." Right, yeah. and they feel like they're already put in the work when they're probably not even like halfway there. And that's something that I've felt we've experienced on our end. Right, but I'm curious to see what are your point of views on that because I mean I know. You promote it. I know you promote your content, right? And I know you do as well. And you actually started to be super intentional now in social media. So I'm curious to see what have you seen, especially with, you know, kind of like having this view over so many podcasters. You know, real quick, uh, can I add to this question a little bit here? Because I, yeah. I had something that really bothered me happen the other day. Or like, I won't say bothered me. It stuck with me. And somebody was talking to me about their show and they've done a really, I listened to it before I got on the call with them. It was a, it's a really good show. And, and they're just like, it's just not growing. What do I, what do I do? I'm like, well, you need to get out there and do this. And finally the person just stopped me goes, Alex, I'm not a marketing person. I, I just like to interview interesting people and talk to them. He goes, is, is there a way someone else can do that? And I was like, huh. I'm like, because if you're going to be a really good interviewer and podcaster, does that mean you also have to be a really good marketer? Like, mm. I, I didn't know what to say. I, I don't know. I'm going to pass that one off. I think... I always come back to, um, it's the high achievers trap. <laughs> we always think we have to do all the doing. And the reality of it is you have to resource the job to be done. And so if marketing is not your thing, then you have to find someone to do that for you and be great in the lane that you want to be great in. If you want to be a podcast host and that's what sets your soul on fire, go do that. But if you want to grow your show, then you need to go hire a marketing firm to help you do that. I'll give you an example. And I think this is really interesting. Pablo and I have this conversation about my show. And, you know, if I'm being frank, it hasn't gotten great traction. But my, my view, what do I want the show to, to do for me? It's so long term. I'm playing the infinite game that I'm okay with. I don't even know how many downloads that I have because I don't ask because that's not the purpose of why I'm doing it. Sure, would I love for it to have more traction and to grow faster? Absolutely. But I'm learning so much, I'm stopping every week to speak with an award-winning CEO and to learn from them, and I get to test and vet the frameworks and theories that I'm building to impact all of the businesses that I'm trying to impact. So it's working for me. It may not be working as a podcast show and the impact that it can, but I also find in business, and you guys, I'm sure have seen this too, where people stop just short. Oh yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. what, what, is the, what is the difference between persistence and stupidity? <laughs> of like, oh, he almost broke through but stopped. And I think to your point, you know, uh, July 2020 is the highest apex of the number of active shows. There's a lot of shows starting and a lot of shows closing. And I just wonder, could they have found an audience? And for me, there's joy in doing the show and learning and speaking to other people mm -hmm. that even if it takes way longer than I thought it would, I'm okay with it. You know, I love that. Like consistency wins. I mean, it really does. Pablo, like going back to the, like the original question, Pablo, you were telling me about your latest show yeah. and how, I mean, not, not that it's growing. I mean, you're, you're a marketer. You, you do really well at that. So does the team, I'm sure. But like it has potential to grow organically because of the type of show it is you can explain. Yeah. You know, I'll jump into that. I have, I can talk about audience growth, but I, I, I categorically reject the need for audience growth, right? Like I, I, 
when you and I speak, you're like, you're a podcast guy, but you're like a podcast guy as like a, like as a tool, right? <laughs> like I don't, I don't really see a podcast as its value being its audience. Like I said, content creation is the new golf, right? With, with scalable externalities towards it. And that's, mm. that's what my talk at pod, po- podcast movement's about, right? Like you guys, you guys were there. Like with the, yeah. the natural average investor show with about a hundred downloads an episode, year one made $40 million in revenue as a channel. And when we reverse engineered and looked back at everything that worked to us, what we realized was that it was about 30 people. It was about 30 people that were responsible for the majority of that revenue coming in because of a couple of different things, right? Because if you can leverage people and relationships the right way, then you don't need a giant listenership, right? So the podcast can be a source of social validation and connections Mm -hmm. and have less than 100 downloads and still be a viable business strategy. Mm -hmm. But it has to be purposeful, which is kind of what we're all all talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So like, if you are tying, you need to understand what your backend monetization is. The whole, the whole thing that you said of the high achievers trap, I think is one business problem. On the other side of it is the idea that creatives just have this problem, right? Like it is no different than the artist that's like, I just want to paint and somebody <laughs> sell my shit. And it's like, yeah, cool, you can do that, but then somebody's going to tell you what to paint. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so that's, that's, that's the give and take when it comes to just wanting to be a podcaster versus this thing being a business tool. Right. So a couple of different things within that is small audience podcasting. Right. The thing that's moved the needle for us is taking really into account kind of like four different things that you use in your business development strategies. One is how you can create uh, a lead magnet, right? Like a content Mm -hmm. magnet of sorts. How are you compiling the same conversation with multiple people so that you at some point have this proprietary data that you can put all together and be like, oh, you want to hear the hundred opinions of car buyers, of podcast studio needers, of, you know, CEOs that have the same pain point of podcasters that, you know, like how to get better guests or whatever, right? Like that's, that's one thing that you can compile over time. The other thing you can compile over time and, and like you can do it episode by episode is what we call content darts, right? And it's just this idea of the old marketing department was, hey, I got to go talk to this buyer. Make me a brochure about this marketing monkey. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's like a whole like thing that you got to design. But in a podcast conversation, you can do that in one conversation. Yeah. You can be like, oh, okay, you want a brochure on how our stuff fits? Let me get the expert on how relationships build into business over time. Have a conversation with them. Have it validate what we do. Send it as advice to somebody, right? Like that's the small ball of it all. Yeah. And it's just all about understanding what you want to have in an outcome and, and what it's going to create and what the inputs are needed to do that. And if you start doing that, right, like our, our big intentional shift became taking every single episode, understanding what the overall outcome lesson that the, that the, that the guest is going to teach, how that relates to our audience, and then going through that episode and not just taking those, those two things out, but understanding, oh, this person in this episode said they also have this pain point. And we had a past episode that, that, that somebody talked about that pain point, so let's get them that clip and send it to them. This person in this episode said, um, clearly designed an expertise around this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark them in my, in my network, right? Like in my list of contacts as if I'm ever gonna produce a class on how to do like small events for business, then I'm gonna use this person that was on the event marketing redefined podcast to co-teach it and have an event around it, right? So it's really no different in the small ball sense of like building a network, utilizing your network, leveraging relationships, doing co-creation on the small end. And then we can talk about audience later, but to me, that's that's before I talk for too long. I just wanted to talk about <laughs> that idea. That's yeah. gold. Could, could help me unpack, right? Because I think I'm on episode 70. Mm-hmm. How are you keeping track? What's the taxonomy? You're using a platform to keep track of. Is it a CRM that you're saying, oh, here was the genius that came out of this episode mm-hmm. and you're using some way to, to track that? Because I don't know, I'm 48, I forget shit. Yeah, and so Pablo's brain. He doesn't have anything. <laughs> he doesn't. Even have, he doesn't own, own a phone or a computer or anything. He just he knows how to use a credit card. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. I there is there is probably you know in, in these in in my podcast and the non traveled Invest Show we've done over two hundred episodes and there's like probably about like hundred eighty where that stuff is not tracked. Going forward, it looks like 
I have a I have a team. When when I'm doing this stuff, we have an air table and stuff is organized. We have these different content pillars. Right now with ChatGPT, it's easy to put something in and say, give me like the main takeaways of this thing or what are the subjects of this thing? And those go in as tags in Airtable, right? So you can search for that stuff. Um, also in a very manual sense, my my you know, my right hand Brian, I'm like, hey Brian. You're keeping a list of, right, like for each client, right, for my finance for physicians, for event marketing redefined. Like I know with event marketing redefined, I want to eventually teach a course on uh, the modern event marketer strategies, right? So I'm like, every guest that comes on, I'm like, if this person, when we teach a course, this is what I would want them to teach. We just have a running list on that person. And per person, we also have a running list of like, on that episode, they said that they needed help with this. Right, so we're just cross-matching that stuff pretty manually, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. So, so if you don't have a team, how do you do that, right? Because I, I, I mean, coming back to your point, Alex, I mean, people are starting shows, they don't get past 10 episodes, they're yeah. probably solo producers producing their own show. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, when you started your business, mm -hmm. you were kind of, how did you organize the people that you met and the people that you introduced to each other? Like, how does the insurance broker that's out there trying to get the business organize? However the fuck you want to organize it, organize it. Yeah, I, Jerry had one of those like, big albums with, you know, yeah. with the, the business hey, cards in there. Like, pictures, <laughs> <laughs> pictures, remind yeah. me. Yeah. Yeah. Polaroids. <laughs> so, so with, some people have a planner, other people have HubSpot super yeah. integrated into I, what I they do. I just didn't know if you had if you had a system that you could share that. It's, I mean, it's a mix table. of both, man. It's yeah. a little bit of everything, man. But my, I, my, but you're right. My brain does work that way. Like, I am yeah. always looking for that. So, so here. Here's, here's a, an example, yeah. right? When we started Continuous Profit, yeah. after episode 20, it was only solo episodes, and then we started tracking a simple spreadsheets, like name of the guest, you know, what do they do, yeah. name of the episode. That evolved into, we are using monday.com at the time, so we started, well, we asked these questions to every guest, let's put it on a form so they can answer it, so that goes directly into monday.com, and you know, each guest has its line, and then that's a database that you can export. Then it evolved into, we work now with Notion. And I remember you, it's like, what's the best project management tool? It's, it's the one that you Dude, use. You're a Notion beast. I, I love Notion, you're I'm obsessed. Yeah, that's yeah. what I'm using right now too. And I, I think yeah. that's that's the point that you're saying there. It's like, there there is no silver bullet. Correct. It's what works for you. Yeah. Because I'll be real, yeah. I tried some of these other tools, like really big tools that everyone was suggesting and it made zero sense to me. Yeah. I couldn't keep yeah. up with it. Here, here's the evolution, right? Like from Notion was more, it was coming more on the production eye where it's like, hey, episode comes in, this is the information of the guest. It has to be produced X way, the way that it looks, the way that it feels, what are the show notes, right? But then when we saw the opportunity, hey, this might be a business opportunity, then what happens, like we just connected that with a CRM. We use Go High Level at the moment, right? So they both mirror like the same flow, but one is production, uh, specific, the other one's sales specific. You have, you know, your points of contact. Do I send an email after? Do I give them a call? Do I send them a text? But this came after executing. And I think, you know, that's the, the friction for a lot of people is like when we're starting a platform like this, especially the concept that we're talking about today, it can seem very complex mm -hmm. from the very beginning. So it's like what I will probably recommend to people is like step back and maybe look at these six faces, right? The, the f number one is like, what do we actually talk about on the show? We actually have to talk about something, right? Uh, so if it's not you as a as like the, the main person, lean on the topic of the other person and have a conversation about that. Stage two is like, how do we create this together, right? Well, the simple way that everybody knows is you can jump on a Zoom call and record that Zoom call and that can become your episode. Then there's like, up, you, you can level up the production after that, but that's the simple way. We've actually had our older brother do it over Instagram Live, which was like crazy and amazing at the same time. So we created together, perfect. Now, how do we produce it? You can go very low friction. It's like you grab that same recording and you put it out as is, right? And then you can level up. You can put an intro music, clean up the audio. There's many levels to that. After that, it's like, how do we distribute? Distribution and, and promotion, right? We talked about the 2080 rule. We talk about how do we actually market this? Do we hire somebody that knows how to do the thing? So that, this is how we like to like compartmentalize like these elements. And after that, it's like, well, how, do our, how are we monetizing the show in a sense? Obviously, it has to be a return, whether that's like a personal return for, I really enjoy having this conversation, so I'm willing to actually put in this X amount of dollars as an investment for us that was our goal was like well i think we can monetize somehow we don't know how but right now we're enjoying these conversations and that for us is a really good return i think one of the early titles was like how to get a hundred thousand dollars worth of advice for free <laughs> right mm -hmm. and you're like well that's crazy because we had conversations with all of you guys we had conversations with people that we admire mentors mm -hmm. that people that we wanted to connect with right and then after that it's like how do i actually run the show so we call it podcast flow 
Uh, that's like our own in, internal term, but is it your CRM? Is it your production, right? Th those two lines. And I, and I hope that gives a, blue uh, a, a blueprint on how do you kind of categorize the things. And you can up the level of each one of them individually, or you can hire people in each of those stages to then continue to grow your platform. You know, the Beautiful, crazy bro. thing is that, that they got $100,000 of advice from Jerry and they got nothing from you and me. <laughs> so, I don't know, man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by the way, pulling the goalie on the last minute penalty kick, that would be the Hail Mary for soccer. Pull, pulling the what? Pulling the, the goalie, goalie on a last minute penalty kick is what like is, the equivalent of a last what minute. What is pulling the goalie? <laughs> Like when you bring your goalie up. Did you know to soccer? Score. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was trying to figure it out. Yeah, like, yeah. Corner, corner kick, maybe. And maybe him scoring. Oh, the yeah, goal. not penalty kick, corner yeah. kick. Yeah, yeah that's how I was yeah, confused. Last, 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 like, last minute corner kick, corner you, kick. Yeah, yeah. You, you pull the goalie in hockey. <laughs> and put in, a six man and in birth control. Does anyone, does anyone here know anything about sports? I'm just wondering. <laughs> I don't. So no this all sounds good to me. I just pretend. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's funny actually. I think you sent me this clip yesterday. This guy is talking on a podcast yeah. about Messi's first game. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but he actually he scored the last yeah, yeah. minute winner Beautiful. off of a free kick. Yeah. And they're talking on the podcast, and I hope it's a parody. If it's a parody. It's great because they got a lot of views. But the guys are talking like, yeah, yeah, he scored a last minute uh, penalty, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, from outside the box. And then he's also going to be made captain of the MLS, you know, <laughs> and, and people like, what? Like yeah. all the comments are like, this guy's don't know soccer, you know, but engagement they, through the room. They got so much engagement, <laughs> you know, and then there was one comment actually saying like, oh, no, this guy's actually no soccer. This is a full on party. They're just yeah. talking about it, you know, yeah. joking about it. And I was like, this is genius. They're getting so much engagement. I can imagine how many people are actually clicking, you know, on their profile and checking them out and stuff like that, which, again, obviously we're more on the business side of things. Mm -hmm. But I was like, that's a cool yeah. strategy to drag some people, you know, get those little spikes. And yeah, maybe yeah. A, per a small percentage of those spikes might be a little retainer, right? Yeah. And you see those strategies kind of like along the way. Some other guy actually puts, you know, like purposeful mistakes inside his edits, like text, for example. He's like, this is what I do from Monday to Friday. And then when he's naming the day of the week, so he's like, Wednesday, Friday, <laughs> Thursday. And then you hear all the comments like, does this dude know that? You know, he makes all this stuff. And he does it on purpose because he gets all that stuff, that traction. Yeah. But the core of the message, right? And this is what we can't forget. The core of the message is valuable, yeah. right? Like, yeah, sure, you can mistake the days of the week, but the core is actually giving the listener a lot of value yeah. and, in that case, a strategy that they can immediately implement. So there's a few things here and there that, you know, talking about promotion and whatnot, yeah, yeah. I think it's super interesting. I, and I think coming back to it, it's like, what is value? Mm. Might be just entertainment. Doesn't yeah, have to yeah. be educational. One hundred percent. Just Value's subjective, right? It's value is in the eyes of the beholder. Sa Saturday, <laughs> uh, I was having a conversation with Mario, our older brother, right? I would continue to encourage to learn English so he can join these conversations. <laughs> uh, but you know, he's running a business in, in Colombia, right? And we're talking about the concepts of shows, right? Because he also started a platform based on like what we're talking about today. Uh, it, you know, it didn't. It didn't monetize how people think it will monetize, but he created a whole business out of it, which is way more incredible. And uh, we're talking, I was talking to him about an idea that I had that I shared with him. It's like, we have this cousin that is hilarious. He's funny. Every time he talks, we just laugh. And then he has also a friend that it's deep voice and incredible. And like, we're like, why don't we start a show just for the pure purpose of talking whatever we want to talk about uh, in Spanish? and for pure entertainment and see what happens, right? Because we've done the business side. Mm -hmm. And Mario was like, man, there's this show that I tune in every single night, like every week with my girlfriend. And it's this guy that they they drink together and they interview famous people while they drink together and they get drunk together and he's hilarious, right? And it's like, that's the concept of that show. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's the concept of Bruce and Bros, the very first podcast we tried to launch. Yeah, thank God we, that did not happen. <laughs> three, three times a week drinking, that would be uh, crazy. That'd be rough. <laughs> but it, it brings into the into the, the table, like, what is the type of show that you want, right? Mm -hmm. That's going to obviously attract a bigger audience on the front end, right? But we also talk a lot about the audience on the back end with the relationships that you can build, right? So if you are a business, do you start a show based on uh, for that or do you align with already creators that are doing that type of stuff? Like for example, this specific show, they align with brands 
the rum brands, whiskey rams, because that's the concept of their show, right? So they don't have specific topic, but they align with that. So there's also different angles on how brands and companies and creators can be in the space together. Totally. I think it's super interesting, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm actually curious to ask you guys, I'm thinking about an answer to my question, but I don't want to give it away. But mm -hmm. what do you guys think we have in common in this table, besides, you know, being uh, super cool, everybody, but also, in the podcasting, and what do we have in potential in common with very successful people in the podcasting industry, and not successful just measured by a big audience, right? But successful measured by them actually staying long term in the game, and you know, success measured maybe by their own their own uh, KPIs, right? It could be their business growing with a small audience, like Pablo was saying, right? Or maybe some of those, it is the size of the audience. What do you, what, what is that commonality? I don't know, bro. You don't know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. Actually, real quick, if I could I'm, jump back to one thing real quick yeah, about yeah, this yeah. whole audience yeah. growth idea. I'm gonna share my favorite growth hack uh, that goes go ahead, well go for anybody. Like, what my team does is we listen to our past episodes. We pick like our cornerstone ones. Some of them, we all know like not, not every episode is a total slam dunk, right? It can be good. Yeah. Someone who likes the show will love it, but it maybe it's not the one you want to use as the introduction to your show, right? Mm -hmm. There's a few episodes here and there that happen that are those, those episodes. Mm -hmm. What we do is we build out really what the core of what it offers somebody and then what they, that person might be struggling with. So we identify two things. What does it deliver on? And what is the struggle that someone would say they want this deliverable? And then what we do is we just go through social media and we search for that type of thing. We use, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of it, right? And we find somebody asking about that problem and we join a conversation with them, even if it's just in comments. We join the conversation, we don't link spam, we join the conversation. And if it opens up, we say, you know what? We actually did, an e I did an episode, we won't say we. we, say I did an episode about this exact topic with somebody I thought you might really get in, it might be interested in. If you check this out, even skip to a minute this, check it out, right? Mm -hmm. We build these automatic, we use text expander. We build automatic responses. Our goal is to get one new listener every day. Because if you look at the data in podcasting on average, right now it's about 410 people listening uh, per episode in the first 30 days, uh, maybe it's the first seven days, whatever it is, it's, it's something along those lines. Regardless, that puts in the top 10% of all podcasts. So I'm like, if you do this for 410 days straight, you now have a top 10% largest podcast in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just make that a regular practice, right? Like find your ideal listener that way. I know this yeah. wasn't your question. I, no, 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 but I think that's, I a, that's a great, yeah, yeah great so, so behind what you're saying, Alex, is understanding your audience, mm -hmm. having an actual niche that you own, right? Like you're talking about podcasters, I would assume, right? Like, and podcasters- For me, it is, yes. For, so for you, right? So like you have- Inception, podcasting you, about podcasting for yeah, podcasters. Which, 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 which is great, right? Like, and, and, and it's easy to throw your hands up and be like, well, that's easy, because just like marketing for marketers is easy, but it's not, right? Because right. podcasters understand when you're full of crap or not, right? So like behind what you're saying is a is a strategy of, you know who you serve and the problems that they have, and you are making content that solves for those problems. Which to me is, at the end of the day, the numbers that you gave, right? There is a, there's a growing demand for podcasting and a constant supply if the numbers of shows aren't going up, right? Now, two things can happen, right? Like these new shows can start to take some market share or what generally happens in markets is that the category king ends up just like with the majority of the category dynamics and therefore the big shows are just going to continue to get bigger. Mm. How do you how do you break in? Like how do you how do you drive a wedge and carve out your own kind of like set of listeners? You need to we just talked about it. We're all podcast super consumers. We listen to a ton of podcasts. Mm. For me to start making a ritual of a new podcast getting into my rotation, it has to solve a problem for me. Like for you to displace the content is profit podcast. You've got to be more Venezuelan and funny and cool, <laughs> and and have and have better content advice, right? If I'm listening to it all the time, right? So that idea, what you were prompting me before, what's working for me right now is we've recently launched a podcast around category design called Category Thinkers. There is category design is a discipline that has been growing steadily for some time the amount of content made around it is still pretty low. There's probably about like three to five real podcasts that are consistently putting out content around it all the time. And one is the category king of it, Lockhead stuff, mm -hmm. right? But we're coming in and we're making a podcast that A, is filling a need, right? Like there is, 
there is a dearth of supply for the demand of people wanting to do it. Yeah. And B, we have a defensible premise of why you need to listen. Mm-hmm. When you listen to our show, you know, all other, this is how I, I make some kind of version of this in my intro every single time. While there are a handful of other category design podcasts, they focus on concepts and success stories of category designers. We focus on getting you to be a better category designer. And that is the premise of it, right? So if you're like trying to like get good at this thing, here's a reason for you to listen. So it's a niche down audience that understands what they're there for. Mm -hmm. And it's a niche down take into that audience. And that, you know, like I've been podcasting for five years, right? Like a multiple podcast that have like a hundred to like 150 listeners. I've never really broken the 200 listener kind of like consistent threshold yet. This podcast has seven episodes and we're already in the realm of like 250 to 300 listeners per episode and growing. Which is amazing. So, yeah, which is which which is amazing. a huge number, yeah, right? Like it's people crazy. Don't, Yeah, so so yeah, man, that that to me I said earlier when we were talking fun. results not typical, just so you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> correct, but big you, big disclaimer. letter we, yeah, well, yeah, letters. Yeah, but results but, not typical. But wanting those results, if, if you yeah. want audience growth results, you have to be really purposeful about who you're talking to, what you're talking about. Why and most importantly, why the listener should be listening mm-hmm. to you, the the Pablo Gonzalez man. I'm funny. I'm cool. I've got cool Are friends. Are you funny? Yes, he is funny. <laughs> well, come on, well, he's funny. like the real I, life Ace Ventura. I, <laughs> you know, like we're, we're all. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> we're all entertaining here, and we're all smart and whatever, right? But like, just open conversations with interesting people is not going to grow you a big audience, man. Right. Like, it's just yeah. not going to do it. That's an element that nobody talks about, and it's. Talent. Are you actually good so at delivering the, the content? And this is a conversation that we had internally mm-hmm. with a, a few of the people that we've served. I'm like, and the people that were scanning the content, like, man, I cannot, I cannot watch this entire episode. I cannot process this yeah. for a client, right? And you're like, oh my gosh, like this is so interesting, right? And that brought into the conversation, right? Because if your own team thinks like, hey, this can be leveled up a little bit, yeah. what is the audience on the other side? The people yeah. listening to you, the people that you send those episodes, you know, that you do the outreach, be like, hey, this might be the episode that you look for. But if you're not entertaining, if you don't provide value, if you're not develop that skill right it is a skill that you have to develop so J- jerry i'm curious on your side he's taking a big breath he's taking a big breath yeah. he's coming well <laughs> I, i'm just listening right and i'm just thinking about business fundamentals and pablo has heard me talk about this a lot you guys have all heard me say this right what is the important painful problem that you solve mm. and who do you solve it for and so while this may be a marketing tactic it's like a sub business inside your business to grow your business, right? Very meta, (laughs) again. I like it. But (laughs) if you don't understand the problem that you solve and why it's important to the people that you're going to solve it for, then you're sunk before you even start. So forget about distribution, forget about production, forget about all those other things. That is the foundational thing that you have to get right. And if you understand that, then you have a fighting chance. I don't care whether it's a podcast, I don't care if it's business, yeah. you have to be in that space first. I mean, we were even talking about you know, podcast studios. Who's the ideal client inside your studio? Yeah. I don't know who it is yet, but you should start having those conversations. Yeah, oh, we're, we're, we're right? finding that out too. Like, it right. depends on like what is, how do we wanna utilize the physical location? Right, and so that's why I come back to, um, you know, my show, maybe from a numbers point of view, isn't as quote unquote successful, but it's serving my needs and the problem that I'm solving for myself. And I'm trying to be a craftsman in growing that into a place where I'm worthy to listen to. I don't think I'm worth listening to yet. Wasn't when you talk about like leveling yourself up, I'm still trying to get there. I'm trying to ask better questions. I'm trying to do better research. I'm listening to other podcasts. And so I don't think I've earned the right yeah, and oh. that, that that like that's being real and humble to do that. And I think sometimes people think like, oh well, I, I recorded the show; they should come. Well, no. Are you someone worth, you know, their listening t- to their yeah. time, which uh, is the most valuable thing? Totally. Also, is like compared, like, is your show compared to what show? That's the other thing, right? Like, we we used to compare ourselves with the top ten podcasts in the world because those are the ones that have the market space, right? But at the end of the day, it's like, well, what's a like John Lee Dumas says, right? It's like, my show was the best one person show, interviewing daily, per, like daily interviews. And that's how he categorized, like he created his own category of the thing. So he's also compared to, right? In soccer, right? You're not gonna compare like a 10 year old team to a professional team, right? At the end of the day, they've been playing for so many years, they've developed that skill. And, and I would argue, 
don't compare yourself. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Comparison's the thief of joy. But the reality of it is you have to find your own voice, your own value, your own audience in doing that. And I hate me too businesses. I hate me too podcasts. I hate me too anythings. Me too, because, by the way. Because <laughs> good one. Because at the at the end of the day, you are ripe for displacement. Because if you could step in on someone else's turf trying to do a better version of them, then someone else is going to do a better version of you. And so you have to find your unique view and, and point of view to be compelling, to say, yes, come listen to me, come yeah. on the journey with me. That's so, that's so interesting. I, I, I've said this in the podcast a lot of times. I'm like, the, the universe puts things in front of me, you know, to have the conversation at the right time, you know, about the right, about the right thing. Literally, I'm listening to an audiobook called Company of One. I don't know if anybody has yeah. heard it or, or read it before. I have missed Fonzie's book recommendations <laughs> i've needed this in my life continue he, he got a new girlfriend he's not reading anymore now <laughs> nah, nice still read a lot. Still read a lot. that's a lot you guys saw the book i'm still reading i just carried it around to pretend um no but actually you know i was listening to to the audiobook and the chapter that i just read was called personality matters mm. right and you're talking about this and you say i don't have a big audience maybe i need to do this but I remember, you know, when I go into your show, you do the Zoom meetings and all these things and your community, I see a lot of the people that they stay, right? And they stick mm -hmm. for a long time. They love not only the personality, but also obviously the value that you're delivering mm -hmm. in their lives. You know, when I see Pablo, it's the same thing, right? Like the people that they keep interacting and they, they keep attracting, like the personality. You, right? Like, it's literally... Just you? It doesn't the, deserve the name? <laughs> Alex, my friend. <laughs> me too. <laughs> my Alex, me too. Yeah, right me, too <laughs> me too over here. Right? <laughs> Alex, it, like, I don't know anybody, like, more passionate about podcasting itself. That's true. You know, than you. And you have a personality around it, right? And people get attracted to it. Which, I'm going to backtrack to my original question. I, was, you guys, I, was, I wanted you to answer your you guys question. Were like, oh, you know, for for know. the record, I was going to go back and have you answer can I guess? Can I guess first? Yeah. Okay, because I've been thinking about this question still. And I think that, I don't know if this is what you're going to say, but I'm thinking it is. It's because each of us knows who we serve and how we serve them. It's along those lines. <sighs> There's something that, that, that adds to that, that tax to that. What do you think it is? You guys dem demonstrated it in this conversation. Personality. Plenty of times. Personality, but every time you grab the mic and you talk about category design, you are what? Passion. Passionate. Yeah, like mm. you absolutely love, again, podcasting. You absolutely love category design mm. since, honestly, since, since you, you gave me the book. Since, since you, you gave me the book. You're like, this is my thing. Since you gave me the book, <laughs> bro. Yeah. And you love best places to lead, right? And like, literally, you talk about that all day long. And I'm going to be honest, like for me personally, Of course, I believe content is profit, but for me, I'm not the most passionate about like, oh, like what are the best ways to create content? Like I'm attracted to that and I'm always researching that, but for me, I'm like curiosity. Yeah, yeah. Like your passion about learning. My passion yeah, yeah. is about yeah. learning yeah. and I love bringing people into the podcast. And you can tell my brother after every episode, I'm like, dude, <laughs> like, this was I so freaking <laughs> good, you know? And then we're up next to the next episode yeah, yeah. and I'm super excited to have yeah. all those conversations, right? I love the curiosity aspect of it. So going back to the question, if people forgot, it was about like, what is that commonality between, yeah. you know, those long lasting podcasts that have found success? Yes, success being a little bit subjective, yeah. right? Because I mean, we're talking about small audiences, some big audiences, but all these people are freaking passionate about the space they're operating in. Do you guys remember your screw it moment when you're like, I'm gonna fully dive into my own personality. I'm gonna do this the <laughs> way that I wanna do it, right? I remember very clearly ours. I'm curious, like that was like a, a big moment for us where we're like, you know what? We're not even, we're gonna put the blinders on. First six months, we're not, look, we're not gonna look at the anything that the show is doing except our own relationship and keep it consistent. Do you guys remember that moment? For me, it was a little later. Um, it was when I hit 100 episodes of my show. It was the first time I did a solo episode, which people had asked me for. So mm -hmm. people specifically listening, be like, we'd like to hear more from you. Like it's 100 episodes in a row of Alex interviewing people, right? Like, yeah. what about you? It was the first time that I was like, well, that, my excuse was that's not my format. That's just not what I'm doing. I'm highlighting them. I'm learning from them as well. And finally, I had that moment. I was like, you know what? Fine, 100 episodes, why not? I'll just go ahead and do one by myself and it's going to suck, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> I did it and still to this date, that was the single most 
common, not most popular, most common on episode I ever had. Wow. So people like reaching awesome. out, messages, emails, people that I know in person who I'm like, there's no way they'd ever listen to the show or like calling me like, dude, that was such a good episode. I'm like, you listen to my show, right? Like, <laughs> but yeah, that was that moment. And then like, it's yeah. funny cause I did that, but my production was weeks ahead. So like when I embraced it, but you didn't hear it till 13 weeks later because I'm organized, right? So 13 weeks later, it's like, okay, that guy's back who was on episode 100. Here he is again. <laughs> episode 114, here he is again. But that was my moment. And it, cool. it, that took a lot of, um, yeah. took a lot of courage. That took more courage yeah. than anything else I'd ever done, I'd say. Yeah. Personality matters. Yeah. 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 That's so cool. What about you, Pavel and Jerry? You want to go first? All right. I, I, I haven't. <laughs> you nodded yes. And then you, just, you all know each other very no, well. <laughs> no, he, he, he nodded doubt. <laughs> I, you know, my, my screw it, I'm going to be myself moment happened before I became a podcaster, mm-hmm. right? Like for me, it was, it was somewhere around, it was around November, 2017, where it was like my 15th year in construction. Um, I'm at this conference. I'm, I'm debating whether or not I need to, um, take this job in the startup world and pursue something else that I'm actually passionate about or continue down the path of construction that I've always been on. And somebody recommended me Gary Vee, right? Like, Mm. and, and started listening to Gary. And at some point I made this decision that was to go against my dad's best advice, right? Like you and I both have successful entrepreneurial dads that we very, very much admire. Um, go against my dad's best advice of like, go, just go be business development man, you know, person at this next construction company. And instead of doing that, I decided to come to Jacksonville and join a startup. And it was the first moment where I just said, Hey man, this really isn't about logical business moves. This is really about this idea that I need to understand mm. if I'm full of shit or not. Right. Like if, mm. if what I believe to in the world to be true is going to get out there, if I'm good enough to bring it out there. And I've mentioned Gary Vee because in Gary Vee's show, the crucial advice that I got from there at that time in my life was that the people that most care about you, when you're in a moment of growth, you need to be vulnerable and you need to like, you, you need to go through some pain in order to grow. And the people that care about you have different priorities. They want you to be comfortable. And at that moment, I was just like, okay, well, this is my moment to just like fully unbridledly be myself. And I've just kind of been on that journey since like early 2018. Cool. So awesome. Thank you. Thanks, bro. I think like Pablo, um, being myself, I had to do that being the uh, offspring of, uh, you know, a broken home and having to find myself and my values and what the impact I was going to make on the world. So this has been a long time journey for me. It's never been like a podcast thing where I had to find my voice. I'm still trying to be a craftsman though inside Mm. my show. And so I, I would say I still feel like I have my training wheels on my bike. He was trying to figure it out and like trying to get better at it every day. And I will, because I know that over time, when I put my mind to something and I really work at it, I get pretty good at it. And that's the level of confidence that I have, which is why I don't like downloads and all of those things. They don't mean a whole lot to me because that's not why I'm doing the show right now. Over time, it will. Mm-hmm. But right now, it's uh, not that important to me. Sweet. Do you remember yours, Fancy? I feel like I'm still on it, you know, like I'm still working on a, you know, be my fully myself, no filters. Sometimes it comes out, you know, sometimes I get sweaty. I'm like, are they judging me? You know, it has happened in this conversation. I'm not gonna lie. It's happened where I'm like sharing my thoughts and I'm like, you know, after I'm done and you guys are talking, I'm like, oh, why am I a little sweaty out here? You know? Was like, it, when you asked the question and none of us had an answer? Is that? I mean, that definitely <laughs> happened, you know? Like, uh, I did, like, did, I ask, did I ask the question in English? <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, I was like, I will bring it back. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I personally think definitely when, um, I think I don't know, I think that contrast between the Spanish show and the English show that we did was huge. But at the same time, there's this special moment in the show that we had that um i think it kind of like really helps me lean into who we are uh we brought todd brown to the show i don't know if you guys who know who he is he's a pretty big uh, direct response marketer and i had read his book we brought him to the show and at the end of the show he was like guys it's like (laughs) i don't say this to everybody you know like but you guys are gonna be big like I remember him saying saying that I got big to the, <laughs> I was like define big, you yes, know. Um, but yeah, he was he was saying that, and I was like about to cry. I was literally calling this guy in the podcast, Mister Todd. I like that's how much you know how 
how much <laughs> not only respect but how kind of like afraid of being myself I was that I was like oh how, how are you doing Mr. Todd, Mr. Todd. <laughs> you know yeah. uh, and at the end of the show he like comes out with this compliment I was like wow you know I was like a little bit of belief you know and still a little bit of belief on like who we are how we do things I was like this is really cool you know because like early that was episode 40 right out of mm -hmm. what 440 that we have right now yeah. and he was saying those things and I was like that is really cool. And you know, I will say this as well, doesn't mean that throughout the journey, like there has not been like a lot of self doubt. There's been plenty of self doubt around that journey, right? Like, should we keep doing content profit, right? Like when we started doing the solo episodes, I said, good, good idea, yes, no. Should we keep doing the other thing, right? Like there's plenty of up, mm -hmm. ups and downs. Uh, but for me personally, I feel like I'm still in that in that journey, you know? And, it might be a, a, a side challenge from being very <laughs> curious on a lot of things because I feel like, you know, and we worked together for a little bit and you were helping us and I feel like my attention just goes to one thing and then I'm like, eh, <laughs> and then I just go to the next thing and, eh, and you know, and I just move on with one and it's challenging at times. Notion, Monday, <laughs> spot, go high level. Yeah, yeah, no, it's challenging. Pick you a know. platform and go. Yeah. 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 You know, but, but one, one thing that is important that I was just thinking about because um, I see this with CEOs that I work with. Curiosity, right, is awesome. And it's part of my business acceleration model, right? A learning organization always outperforms yeah. because they solve problems differently and faster. But in this space, I would be um, cautionary, right? Because curiosity could turn it into a hobby as opposed to a business tool. Mm, Both yeah. of them are fine as long as you've defined, here's what I want this tool to do for yeah. me or for my audience or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. But... I think that is important. Like, why did someone start it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you're not clear on that, it's one of the first things that I always ask with uh, CEOs that I work with. What do you want the business to do for you? Right? Because we're going to pour our heart and soul into the business. Um, what do you want the podcast to do for you? Because we know that we're going to have to pour our heart and soul into it and, you know, solve a problem and all of those things. But yep. I think if you're clear on what do you want the podcast to do for you, which is why I'm not that concerned about, you know, oh, it hasn't blown up. That's okay. That's not what I need it to do for me right now. And that's why I'm able to be persistent and passionate and curious and hopefully helpful, helpful to me, helpful to the people who do listen to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've built some great relationships with CEOs out of it. Yeah. that I continue to text with and, you know, talk with from time to time. I mean, that to me is the gold in it. Lisa, yeah. what was your moment, man? My moment was episode 21. Uh, we brought our our mentor at the time who were paid a lot of money to be in a mastermind. Uh, and uh, That was a good moment, though. It yeah, was like our first, like, online interview. And we needed to figure out a way to introduce him on the show. <laughs> the big intro, yeah, the, yeah. And we were like, man, like... How cool would it be if you do this? And we bring the music that he walks on stage with and blah, blah, blah. And we're like, but this is like very over the top. And, you know, it, for a this is great for a <laughs> podcast. And what if he just leaves? And we just looked at each other yeah. and we're like. And we had some some jokes in that intro too. Like he has yeah, the big, big eyes. eyes. The big eyes. <laughs> I, I listen to 100% a, a, a of all your episodes in the first year, bro. Just for the record. And, uh, and we're like, you know what? What's the worst that could happen? He just like logs off and then we just do a solo episode, which we've been doing for 20 episodes now. So we literally wrote the intro and we you know, we start reading it and yeah. we do the live music. And, wow, and he's like, welcome. And he comes on and he's like, this is the best interview I've ever had in yeah. a podcast. His eyes went from big to bigger, dude. They were and, like, whoa. <laughs> and that day I was like, we need to fully lean into that. And it was like the first real moment that I felt it in the show where it's mm. like, it was us. It's like our thing. We crafted that. Yeah. And ever since that, we're just playing around and we're like, we're okay with it. We're like, hey, you know, if we make mistakes, I mean, the other day we recorded 437, we messed up all the whole intro, the bottoms were like all mixed up because there was a different machine and, you know, yeah. and it, it is what it is. And, you know, with Gary last episode too, we had to record at home. So at the end of the day, what's going to keep us moving forward? But guys, this has been so awesome. We need to do this regular, like once yeah. a quarter or yeah, whatever. Quarter, I think I think the it's going to be podcasting amazing. Podcasting Town Hall. I like that name. <laughs> podcasting Town Hall. Yeah. Uh, very quick, we have like a minute left uh, as I go <laughs> greet the customers that are out there. Share with Fonzie like a 30 second advice on like what, what would be an action point. Give us yours before you leave. Mine will be get started and simplify your process, right? Go back to where I said the six stages uh, of the production and decide of like one way to do each one of them. 
All right, now get out of here. <laughs> go get, go <laughs> make that money. Um, I'm going to try to keep this 30 seconds. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I have like 30 <laughs> things running through my head right now. Um, I'll go with this. In, in software, software is the service that I'm in, we track something called churn rate, which is how quick someone comes in the front door, leaves the back door. And we've talked about this a lot. One of the problems in podcasting, people can get really good at marking a show. And here's the thing, if you can attract a million people a day, but your content isn't good, a million will leave that same day. And so the advice I have is get good at it. Like Jerry, like you're doing such a good job of improving your craft as an interviewer, as a host, as someone that your audience wants to hear. So that the day comes that you're like, let's turn on the marketing machine. People aren't going to be showing up by the millions and leaving. They're going to be showing up and staying. You're going to cut back on that churn rate because you've devoted your time to the craft. A lot of people who talk to me say, Alex, why, what do I need to do to get more listeners? I don't say this. My first question is, do you deserve to have listeners? Mm -hmm. Have you put any time into your own craft as a host? So I tell everyone, start with that. Get really good at what you do. Hone that in really well. So people are like, man, I've got to listen to Jerry. Like, I can't not listen because he's just so good. And so that's my advice. Before you even think about growth, think about getting really good as an individual yourself. Hmm. Uh, my advice is to think of your podcast as a stage and you have an event space. Think about who you want to serve what is interesting to them, the same way that you would if you're putting on an event for people that you were trying to do business with, and then who in your network and who out of the people that you want to serve and who is within an arm's reach that you can invite to talk about the subjects <laughs> that people are interested in and use that as a leverage point. Use it as a stage to create leverage around the people that you want to meet that will add validation to what you already believe, the people that you're trying to serve that you want to add value to from that stage, and that content as how you can share that with people without just being a one-to-one -one scenario. You can just share it at scale. Yeah, my, mine is really simple. Same thing that I talk about in business. Um, define what you want the podcast to do for you. Start there because then you won't be discouraged or you'll know when to stop when you haven't found your audience, when you haven't solved the problem, when you haven't found the people that are going to be interested in that. But if you can define that first that is such a sustaining thing interesting and then for me more than a advice it's kind of like an overall takeaway from today's conversation you know in the podcasting industry that might be decreasing from podcasters but increasing in audience right that is actually a interesting and exciting space to get into where we need to start is why am i doing this right we talked about that right who am i either talking to or also who is going to help me with parts of my process because like you mentioned at the beginning you might not be the marketer and like you mentioned well you need to probably outsource that part right or are you going to be the person that hey guess what maybe i don't have the capacity or resources to do this so i need to learn how to do these things and dedicate to that and then lastly what can i do not only you know what am i doing this but also like, what am I doing for others? Like why are people tuning in and what are they taking away from this episode? So hopefully you guys got uh, some good answers out of this today podcast town hall episode. <laughs> uh, I think it was awesome. We definitely need to do this again. Uh, maybe we'll do one with um, a few cocktails and stuff like that. <laughs> I don't even drink cocktails, but I don't know why I said that. Uh, some, uh, this is not some, the some mini episode. donuts and coffee. I, I think this is going to be the, the bruise and bros. The mini donuts and this, and you know, <laughs> the mini donuts. You can't say you don't eat or drink those. No, we, we cannot say mini donuts because um, my girlfriend family owns Parlor Donuts. So we're going to have to bring big Parlor Ooh. Donuts in here okay. and a uh, Parlor Coffee. Make sure you guys go Sponsor on and check them easy. out. Sponsor you know, easy. We're talking to you. No Sponsor books allowed. No books allowed. Yeah. <laughs> guys, with that, with, with that said, thank you so much for tuning into the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media. That is right. All these alpha male studs <laughs> help you move one step closer to us your goal. Please don't forget to share this episode and and leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> awesome.